Regan. I get ten a day on expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Anthony J. Lyon. They call me the Lion's Eye. With Jack Webb as Jeff Regan investigators, stand by for hard-boiled action and mystery and thrilling adventure in tonight's story of The Lost Lady. Find it in Hollywood, jammed in between Van Ness and Wilton, right off the boulevard, Taft Avenue. Starts at a furniture store, runs for about a block, and then crosses Franklin. What happens to it after that, I don't know. I only go as far as the gray apartment building on the even number sign, about the first thing you see. Figures that the guy who built my place never read the earthquake laws. A good crap game and shake it loose. Well, that's where I live, apartment 308. In the back, where I can keep an eye on a brass drain pipe and a tired-out palm tree. I got a coffee pot and a bed that comes out of the wall. It isn't much, but the phone company had to have an address. That's where I was last Monday night, about 8 o'clock. Some Cleveland fans were running up a house tab in the apartment above me when the phone rang. I thought it might be somebody from Boston. It was the lion. Regan, I'm calling you from the office. I stayed late tonight. You should have joined the union. We got a new client. Yeah? Her name's Isabel Sanchez. I just talked to her. Did you make a date? She flew in from Mexico City tonight on American Airlines. She needs help. They're saying that about the Democrats. Comes from a fine family. Lots of influence in Mexico. Try the State Department. She came all the way to Los Angeles to see her sister, but she's disappeared. Did you tell her about the Missing Persons Bureau? I told her about you. What do you mean? You're going to find her sister. I'm no St. Bernard. You'll do till I can feed one. Besides, she could go to the Mexican Council if she wanted to. Well, what's that got to do with it? Remember the Pan-American Conference? We gotta be nice to this day. Yeah, well, don't make up a contract. I already did. She gave me 200 bucks. What else did you get? She'll tell you the rest. Don't you ever ask questions. That's your job. She's got a room at the Belmont. Hop over there and see her. She's expecting you to find her sister. Is that all? That's enough. Call me after you talk to her. I hope her check bounces. Don't worry. She paid cash. <laughs> You can tell that the lion only stayed in school long enough to learn how to spell dollar. It took me about 20 minutes to get over to her hotel. Isabel Sanchez had a room on the sixth floor. I found it on the Wilshire side. 610 it was. She was a tall, blonde girl, not the least bit pretty. She had a mouth full of good-looking teeth, but she never learned how to use them in a smile. You're Mr. Regan? That's right. Come in. Please excuse me. I'm still unpacked. Come in. All right. I'm so glad you're here. I suppose Mr. Lyon told you everything. Your sister's missing. You want to talk to me? Yes. Oh, it's terrible. An awful vacant feeling. I was so looking forward to seeing Carmen again. We were very close. You talk like you don't expect to see her. But something might have happened to her. Like what? I don't know. She's always been so independent and, well, strange. Well, a lot of people have their own ideas. I'm embarrassed telling you this. You've got to tell somebody. Well... Carmen left home against my father's wishes. How old is Carmen? Twenty-two. What was the guy's name? What do you mean? Ah, oh, come on. I gotta have it all, lady. There was a man in it. Yes. Martin Chambers. From here in L.A.? Carmen met him once in Mexico City. He thought she was in love with him. When was this? A year ago. She followed him back. Yes. He took a long time to catch up. I've been very concerned about Carmen. I received this letter from her a few days ago. It's the first word since she left home. Here. Mm-hmm. You can see it's not much. She asked me to come here. I took the first plane. Mm-hmm. What about this address? There's no such place. I went there right from the airport. Who sent you to us? You're in the phone book. Is that all you got? Well, I have a picture, and it isn't very good. It's a snapshot here. Mm-hmm. Blonde, huh? A little darker than mine. We're the same height. We wore each other's clothes. Who else did she know? Just Martin Chambers. Oh, no. Now, wait a minute. She mentioned a Dr. Menlo in her letter. Did she need a doctor? She just said he'd been very kind to her. That isn't very much to go on. I know, but you will follow every lead. Yeah, sure. What are you scared of? Why do you ask that? 
It's a warm night. You got the shakes. I had a long trip. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You know this Chambers? Yes. You like him? No. What's that you got there in your hand? An evening gown. Why? You didn't bring that for me. Well, our story was smooth, but the clothes didn't fit. All the labels that showed said New York City. I went downstairs to a phone booth, and I got a hold of a friend of mine in the CAA. He checked into it, and he told me that nobody named Isabel Sanchez came in on that Mexico City flight. Uh, the whole thing looked phony, like a fan dancer in long underwear. Well, it was about 11 o'clock when I got over to the lion's place. It was a cold night, but the lion looked warm. What do you want, Regan? I'm busy. So am I. I've been looking at that Sanchez dame. Tell me about it in the morning. No, I'm going to tell you about it right now. It's no good. What do you mean? It's another bum client. She gave me 200 bucks. Her clothes are out of New York. Maybe she came the long way. She didn't come in on American. So she's got a donkey. All you got to do is find her sister. I just told you she's a phony. Let me worry about that. Well, you can start now. Here. Watch this. It's a letter and a picture. That's all the lead I got. Now, wait a minute, Regan. What about our contract? New Year's is coming up. You'll need confetti. I can't do a thing like that. We've got a moral obligation. And 200 bucks. I'm thinking of our reputation. I've given our word. Take it back. That girl's a stranger in a foreign land. She came to us for help. Oh, stop it, will you? If there was a quarter in the bay, you'd drop your mother overboard and tell her to hold her nose. You're getting out of line, Regan. If she came up with kelp, you'd ring her out for iodine. That's enough. We got a case and you're going to handle it. You're going to handle it. I quit. And I know this girl looks suspicious, but we have to give our clients the benefit of the doubt. Why didn't you send her to missing persons? I'll keep this picture and check with them first thing in the morning. You follow up that Menlo in the letter. Well, a guy named Chambers has got priority. Who's that? The girl's got a love story. It's getting cold out here. Check me in the morning. I'll do that. Remember, Regan, we always work hand in hand. Yeah. That's why I never wear a ring. Well, it was too late to do anything else, so I went home and pulled that bed out of the wall. The next morning, I found a Martin Chambers listed in the city directory with an address on Laurel. It turned out to be a two-story apartment building about the color of a bride's blush. And it was wrapped around a swimming pool the size of a bird bath. Chambers' name wasn't on the mailbox, but a skinny guy with a load of bed sheets told me I could find a manager in apartment 15. When she answered the door, her voice sounded like a beer truck in low gear. Hello, Sonny. Looking for an apartment? You got one? No. Nope. Come on in. You having some coffee? You want some? No, I'll pass. You don't know me, do you? I just got here. I played the palace in 26. Ah, oh, them was the days. Write it up and sell it to the movies. Damn slobs. Central Casting had called me in four years. You got a card? AFRA, SAG, and the Musicians' Union. I play French horn. None of them call me. I figure it's a record band. I'll talk to Petrillo. I hate this dump. A third husband gave it to me. By the way, what are you doing here, Sonny? I'm looking for a man named Martin Chambers. What do you want him for? Talk to him. Cop? No. The day that guy moved in, I had him pegged for a gigolo. His hair was too curly. Some women like that. Not me. I used to have to chase him around the swimming pool to get his rent. You're using the past tense. Where is he now? Forest lawn. That's one way to break a lease. He got boozed up about six months ago and drove off to Malibu Pier. Took him three days to fish him out. Straighten his hair? Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> oh, wait a minute here. I, I kind of like you, Sonny. You get around, don't you? Yeah, when the weather's good. Ever run into Louis B? No, not yet. If you do, mention my name, will you? What is it? Just say that Goldie McMasters was asking for him. He'll remember old Goldie. How could he forget? Allison, 26. Mm -hmm. When I left, she was thumbing through an old variety. She looked unhappy like a banjo player with a paper pick. Well, what she told me about Chambers took the leading man out of the picture, but there was a bit player named Menlo. Well, I called the office of a Paul Menlo, but they said he wasn't in that day, so I drove out to his address in Encino was a ranch house poured all over the top of a hill. From the looks of the place, Dr. Menlo must have been getting over sealing for his cough drop. I parked my car by the gate and followed the flagstones up to the front door. When I pressed a button, I heard something that sounded like chamber music. The door opened in the middle of the second chorus. Good morning. I want to see Dr. Menlo. Your name, please? Regan. You'll have to call the doctor's office, Mr. Regan. I already did. Then they must have told you the doctor doesn't see any patients at his home. 
Yeah, well, I'm not sick. Keep it up and you will be. Beat it, Pilgrim. No, I came here to see the doctor. You don't want to see you. Right, get your hands off me, punk. Once I hit a guy in the ear, it busted his leg. Max. I can handle this guy, Vicky. Stop that. Get out, Max. Uh, I'll be in the back if you want. You ever been a referee? I've been a lot of things. Come in, Mr. Regan. I uh, apologize for him. He's so eager. Isn't this better? No, everybody's eager now. Anxious is a better word. Hmm. I like blue serge. It's an effect on me. You the doctor's helper? I hold his stethoscope. My name is Vicky Starr. I'd like to see him. He's busy. Where do I wait? Hmm? Might be quite a while. He just opened the bottle. Well, then I'm right on time. Paul's not sociable like me. He drinks alone. He gets more that way. Let me entertain you. What can you do? Watch. Oh, no, no. Easy, baby. I don't know how to fix a fracture. I've already got a man that can do that. I want one with brains. What's the matter with the doctor? He keeps his in cold storage. Hasn't used him for a long time now. Oh, I don't know. He's done all right. This place? He'd be selling papers if his wife hadn't left him a good insurance policy. Don't you like his money? Huh. Don't get me wrong. I like being secure, but a girl has feelings, too. Mm-hmm. They're beginning to show. I'm glad I met you. Why? We're going to have some nice afternoons. It's football season. I have some free time. Want to hear me on the piano, for instance? No, I don't sing. I'll teach you. Paul says I should have an outside interest. Well, keep looking. You'll find one. You smile, good, but you talk nasty. You started this conversation, sis. Max is still in the kitchen. I came here to see Menlo. You didn't say what about. I'll tell him. There's the phone. Call and make an appointment. Yeah, I'll be... Hello, Vicky. Who is it this time? His name's Regan. He hasn't got a business card. Yeah, Max, throw him out. You Dr. Menlo? Yes. Yeah, should I turn all my patients over to another doctor? Yeah, well, I know one you forgot. Tell me who. Carmen Sanchez. Go ahead, Vicky. I'll talk to him. Watch yourself, Paul. He doesn't know how to be nice. It'll only take a minute. I'll crack the mic. Good nurse. She's out of uniform. We're casual. You said I had a patient named Carmen Sanchez. Who told you that? Somebody she knew? Your relative? Friend. You heard some wrong information, mister. I never heard of Carmen Sanchez. I read about you in a letter. Must have been another Menlo. No, there's only one with a license. You peak, too. Twenty-five a day? Ten. I work for another guy. Who? Lion. <laughs> Lion's eye. Okay. You're still at the wrong house. You want to show me your files? Why not? Come on. Okay. Hey, keep a duplicate at home. Help yourself. A drink? Too early. You don't mind if I have one? No. <clears throat> Anything? Not under Sanchez, no. Now, do you believe me? She could have used another name. Got any ideas? Blonde girl, 5'4", brown eyes. <clears throat> Means nothing. Do you ever know a man named Chambers? Yeah. In high school, back in Denver. Drove a truck. Well, that doesn't help. I'm sort of retired now. Yeah, that's what Vicky said. Nice girl. Talks to everybody. You satisfied? Not yet. Don't mention. Always glad to help out. There's easier ways to make a living. Yeah, I haven't got a wife with an insurance policy. A year ago, I'd have broke you in half for that. Now it doesn't matter. You can find the door. I'll be back. Don't bother, Regan. Doctor will be out. I left him sitting there with a glass of rye in his hand. It wasn't much of an interview, but there was a story somewhere. What Menlo didn't have in his files, he was keeping in his head. and figured he might open up if I showed him that snapshot in the letter. While I drove back to town, I put in a call to the lion. Nobody answered at the office, so I went home. When I opened my door, I caught a load of taboo. Isabel Sanchez was wearing a dress she must have put on with a shoehorn. He's got the nicest janitor. He thinks I'm your sister. Where'd you meet him? He was in the lobby when I came in. I've been waiting for you. Yeah, well, we got an office, you know. No one answered when I rang. I wanted to be sure and see you before I left. Taking a trip? I leave for Mexico City first thing in the morning. Well, it was a short visit. It was long enough. What about your sister? That's what I came here to tell you. I found Carmen. Oh, you did? 
Or rather, come and find me. I feel foolish now, calling in a detective service and all that. Why? Well, Carmen came to my hotel about noon today. And you imagine she's been looking for me. Last night you said she didn't have an address. Oh, that was another silly thing. Only it was her mistake. She's not very good at details. Where is she now? Well, <laughs> she's out buying a few things and packing. I've convinced her to come home with me. All right. Now you want to know what I found? Why on earth should I? I have my sister. You were worried about a man named Chambers last night. Come, tell me she hasn't seen him for months. Did she tell you about her doctor? No. I met him. Only he said he never saw her. Oh, is that so? Well, Mr. Regan, I do appreciate your services. Please thank Mr. Lyon for his kindness. I'm sorry I won't be able to see him. He's going to be sorry, too. You'll give him this envelope with $100 in it. You're paid up. It's for all the unnecessary trouble I've caused you. And, Mr. Regan, it's all confidential. You read the contract. I wouldn't want any of this to get back. Wrong. You know some of the wrong kind, do you? Doesn't everyone? Thank you, Dan. Bye. Hello? You run any expenses on this thing today? No, I didn't. Good. It's all over. Isabel said she didn't see you. There's a guy named Gallagher in missing persons. Got an eye like an eagle. He took one look at that snapshot. Open a file. What kind of file? Dead and unclaimed. What do you mean? Carmen Sanchez has been dead a year, and the county buried it. You are listening to the story of the lost lady, tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, investigator. Before we continue with tonight's story, here's an important message from the Adjutant General's office. The Army Nurse Corps Reserve still has commissions available for graduate registered nurses between the ages of 21 and 45. If you believe you qualify for a commission in the Army Nurse Corps Reserve, apply to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. And now, back to the story of the lost lady and Jeff Regan, investigator. thing to write a new geometry book. Isabel Sanchez came to Los Angeles to find her sister, Carmen. She called in the lion who started me digging. A doctor named Menlo out in Encino used a milk bottle for a jigger. He was heavy on green stuff but light on memory. He gave me nothing but an ice cube. His girlfriend, Vicky, was a little different. She gave me a warm glow, but I still drew a blank on the missing sister. Then Isabel walked into my place and said she'd found Carmen and called off the chase. That's about when the lion rang and said that he'd found her, too, only his version was a little different. She was holding down a plot in the county cemetery, been dead a year. Well, I caught a cab and I went over to her hotel. A small man with a bald head opened the door and looked at me like I was trying to crash a coming out party. Yes? I'm looking for Isabel Sanchez. Are you a friend? She won't think so. She's uh, uh, not available. All right, I'll wait. What I mean is, could you come back later? What's wrong with her now? Oh, well, you see... The, All right, uh, come on, Buster. Let's throw it in gear. Are you a guest of the hotel? No. Now, could you please tell me the nature of your business? I want to see Isabel. I'm sorry. I, I can't let you in until you tell me who you are. Regan, International Detective Bureau. She's a client. Oh, come in. I'm Dr. Stanwyck, the house physician. She need one? Not anymore. Look for yourself. Well, how long's she been this way? Two hours, I'd say. Bellboy found her a few minutes ago. She drank a lot. Alcoholic poisoning. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Regan, uh, when a thing like this occurs, naturally we don't like it to get around to the other guests. You'll use discretion, I presume. I'll be as quiet as she is. Thank you, Mr. Regan. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. The elevator's to your right. I got a good memory. Regan. What are you doing here? I've come to talk to our client. You'll need a Ouija board. What you mean? She's dead. Why'd you let that happen? She wouldn't have done you any good. What you talking about? Yeah, all right. You go to Isabel. You say your sister's buried on the county, but it'll take a little cash to keep it out of the newspapers. Not so now. Go back to your contest, Blanks. Big shot. That Sanchez name didn't come from Mexico and she wasn't rich. You mean she's been lying? I told you that yesterday. All right, we'll close the Sanchez case. Oh, no, we won't. It's still wide open. But where you going? To buy an airwick. <laughs> Well, 
I went down to the Hall of Records. It's a brown building off Temple. It leans over like an old lady with a short cane. I took the elevator upstairs, and I walked down to Vital Statistics. The place was empty except for a guy sitting behind the desk. He had on a black suit with dust on the shoulders. His fingernails were dirty, and he was reading a dictionary. He must have been at a good part, because he looked mad when I nudged him. We're not out of thoughts. Pick shove it. I want some information. That's what I'm here for. I'm a public servant. Now, let's get to the death files, will you? You're a morbid guy. You got a lot of stuff from births and marriages. Ask me something about that. Carmen Sanchez. Died a year ago in August. Tell me what from. Okay. okay. How'd you spell it? Just like it sounds. Sanchez. Seventeen. Sowers. Sanaki. Sampa. Oh. That's what happened to old Sandy. Mm. No wonder I ain't seen him around. Get the Sanchez. All right. I got the Sanchez. Carmen. 22, date of death, 8, 30, 47. Alcoholic poisoning. She drank a lot. Who signed the certificate? P.E. Menlo, M.D. Thanks. Next time, make it something hard. All right. Try this. Menlo's wife died about the same time. Mm. Masters, Marie, Melbourne, Babbitt. Hmm? Babbitt, hmm? Menlo. Sylvia, 3492-47, alcoholic poisoning. Certification? P.E. Menlo. That guy can't keep a patient. Well, I left and I went back out into the street. It was almost five and the traffic was heavy. I started to cross the street to a sandwich shop on the corner. A yellow cab raced me to the sidewalk, but I won. I went inside and a skinny waitress with peanut-colored hair brought me a cup of stale coffee and a burnt hamburger. I sat there and I tried to figure it. It was like swimming through a tidal wave in hip boots. Three deaths from the same thing and Menlo's name on every one of them. Well, the answers weren't in the coffee cup, so I went home, picked up my car, and drove out to Menlo's place in Encino. The drive was nice, and so was the reception. I built a fire. I forgot the marshmallows. We'll think of something else. You know, I'm not mad anymore. I'm still looking for your doctor. Let me take care of it. No, I want to see him. You'll have to wait again. When's he going to climb out of that bottle? We had dinner at a place on Ventura. Paul found the bar. He'll stay till it closes. I better go there. Questions again? Maybe. I know some swell answers. I bet you do. I've worked for him a long time. One year. How did you know? This is my night off. You here all alone? Isn't it terrible? Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. How do you like it? Your way? That's better. Now, let's have a nice, quiet evening. Just you and me. I had a feeling you'd be back. That way you wore that? Like it? Well, you've got talent, lady. Discover me. Mm. There's been a famine of men like you. You don't look underfed. Why didn't I meet you sooner? We didn't travel in the same crowd. Let's start over. Do you keep his files? What's that got to do with us? They'd never pass inspection. Are you talking about something I should know? Carmen Sanchez. What about her? She died. Menlo signed her death certificate. Paul's lost a lot of patience. He's not very good. Did I tell you I played the piano? He told me some other things. Did I? They make a good story. I don't like stories. Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. I thought we were going to have a nice, quiet evening. The girl walked in his office one day and dropped dead. Good opening. Why'd she do that? Alcoholic poisoning. She was a nobody named Carmen Sanchez. Story's getting dull. There was a snapshot in her pocketbook. Not much help. When does the uh, action begin? Right now, lady. The doctor's wife had an insurance policy. He convinced her to take a trip. Why do you want to do a thing like that? So he could pull a name fix and collect his wife's insurance. He had a body. No one will ever believe this plot. He buried an empty box. How do you know? I'm going to have somebody dig it up. What about the body? He turned that over to the county. Everybody lives happy ever after. Don't you like my music? You're going to have to take up the harmonica, lady. Why? The gas chamber isn't big enough for a piano. Who's going to the gas chamber? You, maybe. An insurance broad's one thing. Murder's a longer rap. You haven't touched your drink. I don't like mine that strong. Now, come on, lady, get your coat. Max! I thought you were alone. I lied. Hello, Regan. You look excited. He's tough, Max. Yeah, that's easy. Soften him up. Oh! Oh! oh. I was in a hall. 
white room when the trip ended. I tried to move my head, but it felt like a grand piano. So I just lay there. Pretty soon somebody put something damp on my face, and I began to see things. Vicky was there, Max. So was Menlo. If I'd have had a deck of cards, you could have played a peanut game. Menlo looked kind of upset, like an ostrich with a sore throat. He had a needle in his hand. I get the shakes. You're all right, Paul. Now go ahead. Just like Isabel. You should have stayed out, Regan. Oh, I wanted one more look at you, baby. I hate to see the nice ones go, but it'll all be over in a minute. All right, Paul. Give me a drink, Vicky. Never mind. Hurry up. Let me have a drink. Oh, you're too slow, Mac. Yeah? Keep away from me, Max. I'll kill you. Yeah. Put down that keep gun. away from me. I swear I'll... Oh, I, told I told you to keep away. Oh. Menlo slugged for Kara Max, but Vicky shot Menlo twice. And his knees knocked together. He began to pitch around like a toy balloon in a hurricane. He dropped his gun, but he held onto the needle. Then he slumped forward and made a grab for Vicky, and they both went down. He jammed the needle into her arm. Here. Same stuff you used on Isabel? Yeah. <laughs> Don't call it alcoholic poison. I'll straighten them out. You can hold my head. Yeah. Here. Call it down there. He'd never make it. Please, Ray, and go up. No dirt. <laughs> Give me five good reasons. Five? Good reason. I got Vicky. I'll never use a needle again. And you only gave me two. Well, we didn't hear from the suburbs, but there were enough ballots to make it an election. Homicide got the insurance commissioner down there, and he threw in a vote. Seems that Isabel Sanchez was Menlo's wife, only her name was Sylvia. When a dame named Carmen Sanchez dropped dead in his office, Menlo got kind of ambitious. He talked his wife into the switch, and, well, everything might have worked out. Except one night when he was seeing elephants, he told Vicky the whole thing. She set the squeeze play with Max in the dugout. When Sylvia got back and saw how things were, she called herself Isabel Sanchez, and went to the lion with a story about a lost sister. I was hired for scare work, and when she figured they had enough, she called me off, but it didn't take. And you know the rest. Well, the insurance company issued a fee for exposing it to fraud, and the lion got his picture on page one. It was right next to Vicky's. He was wearing one of those French swimming suits. The lion said, that'd do us a lot of good. It did. We each got a free bathing suit. Jack Webb is featured as Jeff Regan with Herb Butterfield as Anthony J. Lyon. It's CBS at the same time next week for more hard-boiled action and mystery with Jeff Regan, the investigator. Written by E. Jack Newman and Larry Roman. Produced by Sterling Tracy. The role of Vicky Starr was played by Yvonne Patey. Lorraine Tuttle was Isabel Sanchez, Ken Christie played Dr. Paul Menlo, and Larry Dobkin was Max Brenner. Original music for this program is by Milton Charles, Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>